Welcome everybody to this very much beginner tutorial for SAP Cloud Application Studio. In this tutorial I want to show you how we can very quickly create our first application in, with the SAP Cloud Application Studio. So, the very first starting point always is that we need to connect to our system. You need to put the settings in place and you need a development user. So, I just assume that you have this already. I put my username here and I log on to the system. After we logged in, we are connected to the system. Now you can see I'm in a system where a lot of people created already solutions for our cloud solution. Now let's create our own solution. So we say create solution and here we just put first the description. So the description should be the name of our solution. We want to create an invoice calculator. Then actually you can just click OK and create your first solution. By that a solution is like a project, so now we have a solution created where we can create our coding and also our business object. So the very first step is to create a business object. We have an empty solution here now. Let's start with creating a new business object. So I go to new add item and then I select the type business object. Here I rename this also to invoice calculator and I will say add. A business object is always the definition for a data. So a business object defines in the end a database table. So every database table has some fields. Let's put some fields in our invoice calculator. At the very first point in time, we use a code completion with control space here and we will have a label. A label defines the label for UI later. We will have one primary key and we define an element. An element is a field in your database, but you will see this after. We will use a data type ID here. So you specify a column in a database by having a label, then the element keyword, then a name for your field and then a data type. So let's add some more fields. So we want to add maybe a customer name. Let's copy this line here to make it a little bit faster. So we want to have one field customer name. We want to have one field product. We want to have one field amount, where we put like the amount, how much um, the invoice is. We put a field tax, because we want to calculate the amount times the tax. And we put a field total amount. Okay, we will concentrate on doing a very simple solution Instead of doing the perfect solution, this is just to explain you how you can get a start. So, customer name, we also have now to rename these fields here. Product, amount, tax, and a total amount. So now, we need to define some data types. So for custom name, this should just be a text field. So we will use a text field here. We can use a medium text. For the product ID, we will also use the data type text. We could also use a specific data type product. For its amount, we will use the data type amount. For text, we will use the data type percentage. So let's take a look at this in the code completion here. Percent is the right data type here. And the total amount will also be an amount. Okay, by doing that, we already have created a business object. So we defined a database table by doing that with one, two, three, four, five, six fields. And those fields are specified with the respective data types. Now we also want to have some logic. So we want to have an action calculate 
total amount. An action will cause that we can put some business logic attached to our UI later. So now always what you have to do first, you have to activate your business object. This activation puts your business object into the SAP runtime where everything can be directly executed. So the database table is created now and you don't have to borrow the actual this, you just define it here in the business object and the system will take care of the rest. Okay, we said we want to have the action calculate total amount doing the calculation for the total amount. So let's do a right click on your business object and then you see all the operations. We want to do now create the script files where we can put the logic. So a business object never has logic, it only contains the structure of your data. So here now in the action, there we can put the coding. So let's do that. With this, you can access all the elements from your business object. And what we want to do is we want to say this total amount. For an amount, it's always a little bit special because an amount consists out of an amount and a currency, so we only take now the value of the amount really for the calculation. So we say this amount dot content is equal to this dot amount dot content times our percentage times this dot tax. Okay, let's take a look what we have here. No, this is okay. Okay, and by doing that, this action should actually calculate our total amount. This is not completely right. I mean, we should add here plus one. So we should include here the 100 to do the actual calculation. So let's check that out. How do we execute now this logic? Okay, I mean, this logic can only be executed by like having it on a front end. So we need a UI. Let's do that. First, we activate the action as well so that all our coding is in the runtime. So now the next step is always to generate some screens. So let's activate first also our business object because you saw because we activated the action, also our business object got updated, but now everything is activated and we can just create our screens. So I select create screens. We want to keep it as simple as possible, so we generate a screen scenario with object-based navigation. Normally, in Cloud for Customer, you would use the thing-based navigation, which I explain in a different tutorial. So we just put a short ID here, it's a mandatory field, and then we say OK. And now you will see that the system generates the complete UI that we need. So after that, we have already a complete application done, we can enter some values, we can store them in a database, and we can execute some logic. But let's see that directly in the system now. So we will see that in a second. Okay, now you can see in the right hand side the system generated all the screens. In the first moment it looks a bit, a bit much, but this is just what is necessary. We have a work center as we know it from the application. We have an overview of our database elements, the OWL, and we have a QA where we can edit the elements. But let's preview our OWL. So you just do a right click here on the screen. You say preview screen and the system will open up. So now you can see the generated screen for our solution. You see we have an overview where we can have multiple items and we have some buttons here. So let's create now a new text calculation. I click on the new button and a new window opens up. This is now our QA screen. You see the screen is generated so we have, it's not very nice, but it's sufficient. So we just put a key here, we put a custom name here and we put a product here. So now we want to put some amount here and if you want, we can also put some currency here and we put a tax here. Okay, so now let's do the calculation and check out if this works. Oh, you can see, actually my calculation was not completely right. So times 100 was wrong. <laughs> so, but you can see this way we can do a calculation very quickly and we can just 
have a creating an application within like a few minutes. Instead of times 100, I should have put the absolute coding to divided 100, but let's just change that. So we put it this way, we save again, so we change our coding, we activate our calculator here, and then we go back to the UI and take a look here. But let's just for sake of trying, save this here, close it, and let's see what we got here. So you can see we create our first database entry with like all the values and we can open it and edit it and then maybe correct the values that we put in there before. So the UI opens up again, now loads all those values. Now let's do another calculation, hopefully with a new logic. We click on it and you see now we get also not the total amount, but at least we get the 19% of the 50 euro. So we can save this again, do another small correction here. Because in our case, we don't only want to calculate this, we want to calculate this and sum it up with this here. And then we should have the total amount. Let's activate again our script file and check it out in our solution. So we can, again, we go back here, we close this one here, and this time let's not correct the calculation, let's just create a new one. So I create another entry in this database table, I put another key here, another customer, and a product, and some amount here some currency here and again some tax value here. So let's calculate the amount here and now we see the calculation done correctly. We have 33 euro 60 here and with a tax of 12%. Normally you would also take the currency into account, maybe currency conversion, but just that this should just give you a very basic overview how you can create within a few minutes already a complete application which would work as a full work center in your cloud as uh, in your sap cloud application thank you for watching and i hope this helped you to get a start